Good morning. It's time for Daily Chapel at the LCMS International Center in St. Louis. Today we follow the order of responsive prayer 2 found on page 285 in Lutheran Service Book. The text is Luke chapter 5 verses 1 through 10. The Reverend Sean Denzer is preaching. The broadcast of chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. A reading from Luke the 15th chapter. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to hear Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes grumbled, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So Jesus told them this parable. What man of you having a hundred sheep, if he has lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. When he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and seek diligently until she finds it. And when she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so, I tell you, there is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. This is the word of the Lord. Today's parables are very difficult for us to hear, not because they're complicated, but because they're so familiar to us. We already know that the Pharisees and the scribes are the bad guys in this story. They're the mean girls. They're sitting over there at the cafeteria table judging the rest. And when Jesus sits at the loser's table, they judge him too. But you'll never guess what happens next. The same thing that always happens next and exactly what you want to happen next. The mean girls get owned. The unlikely underdogs win the day. This parable is just the familiar cliche all over the YouTube titles. Jesus destroys the Pharisees. He drops the mic. He punches the Nazis. But of course, watching a partisan video of your people beating up on those people and feeling the rush of, yeah, get them, That is just as judgmental. And I'm no schoolyard expert, but something is off in our ultimate fighting tactic if punching the Nazis and leaning into bullying is the best way to defeat the bullies. You can draw the lines differently, but you can't avoid it. This is the sort of sinner that you and I are. Pharisee or tax collector, no one is above this. Pride. Its desire is over us, and we must rule over it. The way to rule over sin is not to indulge it in a different, less harmful, or more socially acceptable and approved way. The way to rule over sin is to repent of it, is to expose it in yourself, to admit it, and to flee it. Faith does that. Faith sticks firmly with the Word of God even when it compels me to change my mind about what I admire most, myself. And that's what these parables are about also. Repentance is a change of mind. It is a change of mind away from self-righteousness and pride, which is the root of every sin, and toward Christ's righteousness and mercy, which is nothing other than the forgiveness of sins. But if we can only hear these familiar parables like the latest podcast or TikTok rant, Jesus obliterates the scribes, we have deeply misunderstood them. We are finding joy in something that our Lord takes no pleasure in, the death of a sinner. God wants sinners to turn from their evil way and live. That's what his prophets have said. That is why he sent Jesus Christ, to seek and to save such people, to receive them and to eat with them. 
Time and time again, we prove ourselves incapable also of that other cliche, love the sinner but hate the sin. We show that we lack the wisdom and the will to put that into practice. But with Jesus Christ and him alone, this will is done. It does take a good shepherd who seeks his own rebellious and stupid sheep in order to rescue them. It takes sweeping and lighting a lamp and baffling to our penny-pinching and number-crunching minds, then throwing away a day's wages, searching instead of working, all so that when it is found, even more coin can be spent to throw a feast of joy. What man among you would do these things indeed? None. No earthly father, however much we honor them this week, no earthly father is as selfless and sacrificing and long-suffering as the heavenly father who awaits the chance to forgive his prodigal and receive him back. And he would not even punch the bully of an eldest son either but he pleads to have him back to share in this joy. I desire not the death of a sinner, but rather that he turn from his evil way and live. Only the Holy Trinity can untangle a sinner from their sin. His mercy extends not only to the drunks and the cheaters and the fornicators and every exotic and admirable sinner of our time. His mercy extends even to those who think that they deserve more because they've behaved better. And to those sinners who confirm their humble rightness by delighting in the downfall of all the wrong ones that they find a little more arrogant than themselves still somehow. Do not miss the lesson of the older brother in the parable of the prodigal son also the one that ends this trio of lost parables, that father does not slam the door or drop the mic. He steps away from the party, out into the cold, to put an arm around the jerk because he wants to bring him back into the family as well. That's mercy. No matter which sort of sinner you may be, a loser wallowing in the filth that you've made for yourself, or a self-important, judgmental mic dropper, Jesus comes to seek and to save the lost. Do you see that you are the lost? Because he pays the price. He has compassion on those who do not deserve it losers and bullies alike. And woe to us, dear friends, if we despise grace so much that we do not marvel at this fact. Jesus shed his blood for the Pharisees, for the Nazis, for the mean girls. St. Paul was such a Pharisee. And he bids us to take up his trustworthy saying. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the chief. And you also then are invited into something much better than the popular girls' table or the winner's club. You're invited to repent and believe the gospel, which Jesus says is to join in the joy of all of heaven. Even the holy angels are rejoicing in this. Even God himself delights in this. Not the death of sinners, but the life of sinners. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for joining us for Chapel. The broadcast of Chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. To learn more about long and short-term opportunities to serve, visit servenow.lcms.org.